Welcome back. Thanks for dropping by. This morning, the old dude is going to make biscuits. I'm not going to make traditional buttermilk biscuits. Uh, I don't have the strength to get everything put up and set up and all that. It is early. Hold on just one second. Get a little bit of my mud there. I drink really strong Folgers coffee. It's the morning I've got some evaporate, evaporated milk. See, it is early. Can't even say evaporated. Anyway, we're going to make two ingredient biscuits. There's a lot of recipes on the internet uh, that have uh, two ingredients, but most of the time it's either sour cream or heavy whipping cream. I don't have either one of those. I always have buttermilk. Now, granted, this is low fat, but uh, I'm going to try it and see if it makes biscuits. So what I'm going to first do, I've got some self-rising flour. You can see that. I'm going to, I'm going to get about two cups. Let me get the camera down here so you can see what's going on. Maybe you can see that. I'm going to take about two cups of self-rising flour. I don't have an exact measurement. I know from baking for years, and they say, oh, you got to follow all the instructions. And yeah, you kind of, kind of got to keep close to it anyway. But you can vary a little bit. And there's a lot of other things. I mean, how much moisture is in there, how hot it is. Uh, this flour is cold because it's been in my freezer. And that's where I save it because I don't cook uh, with flour, especially self-rising flour, every day. So I keep it in the fridge or keep it in actually the freezer door. So it's already pre-sifted and you don't have to do all the sifting stuff. I mean, if you want to, that's fine. But uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put one cup of buttermilk to start off with. Let's see how shaggy this is at one cup. Right. I'm gonna add just a little bit at a time. Say this, this recipe flung up on me, I thought, eh, I wanna make biscuits. And I've actually got some canned biscuits in there I could put on this morning, but I thought I would make these. I can't see my buttermilk. If you can make a biscuit with sour cream, or heavy cream, why not buttermilk? Yeah, it's coming together a little bit. May need a lot more milk though, a lot more buttermilk. Well, it smells good. Gotta love the smell of buttermilk. Yeah, it's gonna take a little bit more. How much more? I don't know, just, just a splash more until all your dough starts getting kind of ragged, sticking together and making a dough ball. We're just gonna make just a little bit of biscuits this morning. It's just my wife and I. I mean, you can make them a whole oven full, but you can see I can't do two things at once. You can make a whole big pan full and freeze them. It's getting there. You can see it's wanting to ball up and clump up. And I think just a little bit more, just, just a touch. It's probably going to be about a cup and a quarter, I would imagine, of buttermilk total. One thing about it, if it gets too wet, you can always come back and add more, a little bit more flour. And if it doesn't turn out, you've wasted a few pennies of flour, You've made some dog treats for your dog or the birds. I believe that this is going to be close to where it's going to get, boys and girls. All right. Let me reach up here and grab my oven. I'm going to turn it on to 450 or 400. Get my 
knives out of the way so I can see. I'm gonna preheat it 400. And I've got a skillet in there. I just remembered I need to get out. That's what I'm gonna bake my biscuits in. All you're doing is get to look at the wood ingredients here, but now you gotta get the gotta get that pan out of there. So I believe this is gonna ball, ball up and and make a biscuit dough. I'm just gonna kind of push it together. Oh yeah. Well, there's nothing left except use the tools that God gave you. Try to keep one hand kind of dry. Oh yeah, this is going to be actually pretty good. It looks like I'm going to do everything in one this one big pan. This is a huge salad bowl that we never use anymore and I think it's made out of compressed coconut holes or something like that wood fibers I, heck I don't know we have we got a set of these when we first got married over 30 years ago and uh, got the little bowls that go with them so I'm just I'm gonna need this just a little bit but not a lot sometimes when you need dough it gets tough. As you can see, it's coming together pretty good, though. Now, if it just bakes. No, I don't need a spoon anymore. I'm going to put a little bit more flour, just because it's sticking a little bit. I just want it to be easier to get my hands off the stove completed. All right. You can take and roll this stuff out. I don't want to miss any more, mess any more cabinet space up. So I'm going to do it just right here. Right where are you looking? I got a biscuit cutter somewhere here. big man coming in and out of the kitchen like hey pop what you got cooking what you got cooking for the boy well I don't know where my biscuit cutter is and I don't feel like getting up and finding it so we're gonna make four biscuits well say power around I could be square Cut out okay, yeah. I could ball put each one of these in a ball, and I think I will just to, just to roll them up just a little bit, just cause I can. Nah, heck, no, I'm gonna leave them like that. Just to, just want to roll the ends ends in just a little bit, just to, so they won't get burned on the corners or anything. one big biscuit for the old dude this morning. Right. Yeah, that's good. All right. Let me get this camera back up here so that... Oh, goodness. 
life's a struggle this morning. There you go. Let me shoot all this in one take, maybe. I'm gonna let this set here for just for a minute. You can see my hands aren't too bad. Uh, let me put this Dover uh, on the sink so I can let them, we'll let them set and rise just a minute. They're, they're actually, I can tell they're already rising up a little bit and get my skillet over here. This is real life cooking. I've got a little bit of kitchen. So, you get what you get. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of butter. Not much. Maybe one and a half pats. Maybe one and a half teaspoons. Not no exact measurement. I just want to grease the pan up good. And putting butter in the bottom of this cast iron pan will do two things. It'll help relieve the biscuits, of course, they won't stick to it. And uh, let's see, can you see there? Oh, there you go. It'll uh Make the biscuits crispy on the bottom. And just the heat of my hands doing this is melting this butter in perfect. And this old skillet's did everything in the world. Cook everything in the world. My first rabbit I ever shot, it was in like November, December. Cottontail brought it home, and mother, uh, dad showed me how to. That I was about 10 years old, I'd taken a 22 out. Dad showed me how to uh, clean it, and uh, mother fried that up for us. I thought, oh my god, this is, this is greatness here. So, I'm gonna get my pan of biscuits out of here. You see, that they're looking pretty good. Little wonky on one side. Who the heck cares? All you want is to see butter. I like my sides touching when I'm baking biscuits. I know a lot of recipes say, you know, two inches apart or one inch apart. I like kind of how, I, I'm not squashing them in here, but I like for them to touch just a little bit. That way, uh, I think it keeps them not as dry. I, I think they're, they stay more moist when they're touching. And if I had to kind of pull them apart, that's okay. I don't care. They're, I don't want scones. I mean, I like, don't get me wrong. I like scones. That I've made scones before. They're just kind of dried out biscuits with fruit in them and, and, and sugar. And there's, of course, there's no sugar in here. You can see this has started to rise pretty good. It is sitting here. I mean, literally, this is just two ingredients. What you see is what you get. Let me check my oven, see if it's preheated. I think it's getting close anyway. Let me uh, grab this pan and uh, put it in the oven here. If I was cooking cornbread in that little skillet, I would take, show here, I would take, I would have heated that skillet up with some butter and vegetable oil until it's pretty dad burn hot and pour my batter, my cornbread batter in and let her rip tater chip. I want to see it bubbling and put it in at 400 and cook it until it's done. And you know, maybe seven or eight minutes depends on how much, but uh, how much, uh, cornbread I've got in there. Uh, I'm going to do, be doing some cornbread here soon because I'm going to have a whole series of uh, holiday uh, food. Dressing. Uh, I, I don't make stuffing, uh, but I make dressing. And uh, 
there's a couple of different ways to make it, but I use cornbread. It's a traditional cornbread dressing, and um, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, I've made dressing uh, and scooped it out with a, a melon baller and made like one inch balls, rolled them up and deep fried them. Oh my God, they were great. They were oh, took them to a party one time. They were uh, we served them with uh, cranberry sauce, the the jelly type, you know. And with the little berries in it, and also a gravy sauce, a little bit of mustard gravy. You could just take it on a toothpick and get dip one of those into your your sauce. Oh, everybody said, "Where did you get this recipe?" And I said, "Man, I don't know. I just woke up. That's the way my mind rolls. I wake up and think about stuff, and I just do it. I, I don't worry about the cost of the mistakes kinda until after it's over. And if it didn't work out, it didn't work out. Unfortunately, in my life, I, I, I've done my whole life like that, and some of the mistakes have cost me dearly." Uh, but some of them have turned out and, you know, you live another day, hopefully, and uh, going down the road. So let me set this timer. Uh, we're going to set it for eight minutes. And I'll just bring you back in eight minutes here. Back with you. Still got about four minutes to go. I'm just uh, getting my butter ready for my biscuits. I hope that by the time they're finished and they start getting a little brown on top, I'm going to brush some butter on them. Makes them a little crispy on top and it makes it so good. I'd have people even taking mixed butter and honey together, which is great, except my wife being a diabetic, that's, that's a not a, a deal for her. For her to eat a, even eat a biscuit is, uh, rare. Anyway, got my butter ready. This little butter dish and I've got a lid that goes with it. I bought this off of Timu. Uh, it was a dollar and something. I mean, I, it was four or five dollars everywhere else. So, uh, yeah, it took a while to get here. I had to admit and, and I get dads every day saying, I want something. Am I going to re redeem this? Are you going to re redeem that? And uh, so they kind of hound you to death. But you know what? It's worth it. Uh, I've always said, you know, I'm old and retired. I'm, I'm in no hurry to get there. So I don't know where there is, but I'm not sure if I want to know. I just want to get to the next day. I was going to show you the buttermilk. I've already put it up. Uh, that buttermilk is past date two months. I just always open it. Real buttermilk has live cultures in it. You know, like you see these yogurt, we've got live cultures in it, it's good for you and all that. Well, that's great. But buttermilk was the original gut food. I grew up drinking it. My dad would put cornbread in, in a glass and pour buttermilk over the top of it. I, it, it just tasted bland to me to do that. I, I don't know. It, it, it wasn't a flavor I really liked or I didn't dislike it. It just wasn't for me. But I love straight cold buttermilk. Man, a big glass of that and I drink it down and I, some of my friends say, how do you do that? And I said, well, don't you eat yogurt? Of course, yeah, they say, yeah, but you know, got blueberry in it and all that. And I said, oh, okay. But anyway, you can keep buttermilk for a long time. And matter of fact, if you're almost out of buttermilk, take and refill your container uh, with regular, you know, whole meal. Shake it around. 24 hours, the active uh, cultures in that buttermilk will turn that fresh milk or vitamin D milk into buttermilk. And it just very seldom goes bad. I mean, if you open it, it's, buttermilk has a sour smell anyway. Let, let's face it, that's, that's why it's good. But if you open it and you, and you look in it and it's got a funky smell like, I don't know about this, look down in it and if it's a different color or anything, I'll throw it out. I mean, $2, I mean, it ain't worth getting sick over. But that's how the old dude rolls. And uh, I just use it until it's almost gone. I put a little bit more milk in it. And I think that that uh, carton is probably, I think it's two months past due and it's still rolling and it's still fine. So. Let me see these biscuits. Uh, it's got one minute left. 
God, they're rising like you would not believe. Like, like craziness. All right, let's see if I can. Let me go get a, something to put. All right, timer's not gone off yet. Let me turn this camera around and get you a better view of them cooking in the oven. There those baby boys are. Man, they, they are, they're alive. We're alive. They're puffing up and they smell wonderful. Just think about it. Two ingredients. No cutting in butter, no cutting in shortening or fat. I hope they taste good, but you know, they got to taste good. Butter and flour cooked biscuits. Oh, can't wait to try one. I'm going to get some butter out, and I can't do that and hold the phone at the same time. But I'll be back in just one minute. All right. Let's get these out of the oven. Um, oh, there's my other hot pad. I went to get the brush, and I found my biscuit cutter. Actually, too, I've got an old can that I've used for years, and I tell you, I forget, my short-term memory kind of sucks. But uh, slowly but surely, my, I remember what I, you know, what I did in 1963, working on my first hot rod, the carburetor settings and the and the point setting. But what happened last year is a little fuzzy sometimes. But it's slowly but surely coming back. So let me get these out of the oven. They're just now starting to turn brown. I think you're going to be amazed just like I am. Like, oh my God, look at this. OMG. <clears throat> so, there they are, boys and girls. Ah, they're pretty well baked. I just need a little browning on top. I'm going to heat my brush up here just a minute. Yeah, you can see they're kind of crispy, sounding even. It's amazing what you do if you just get in and try it. It doesn't cost much. A little bit of milk, a little bit of flour. If it doesn't turn out, your neighborhood birds and cats and dogs will eat it. Or My big man has been in here all morning. It's like, Dad, I don't know what you're cooking, but it sure smells good. So, let me put these back in the oven. I say that they feel really good. Like, oh man, I can't believe how much they've risen. All right, here it goes. Probably going to be about a total of about 10 minutes, 8 to 10. That really varies on your oven. So, I mean, I think they're really done. They, they felt like they are. I, I touched on them, but they're not much anymore. So, what I just did, I turned on the broiler to get a little brown on the top. to get a little glorious brown cookness. Check these right quick. Oh yeah, maybe another minute they'll be ready. That's my wife something. Cindy, you ready for your coffee? Yeah. It's ready. Yeah. Do what? It's ready if you want to come get it. I can't leave the, the stove right now. I'm baking. So. She's actually talking back in there. 
she's not had her coffee. Check these again. Well, they, they smell wonderful. Oh my goodness, this is, this is really a game changer. As long as they taste good, it's going to be a great thing. I mean, literally, that is. I'm baking biscuits. Huh? I'm baking biscuits online. Okay. Make it so just let you know. She's on a scooter of a broken foot, so uh, she took care of me almost a year. Uh, cooking and cleaning and helping me bathe and all that and when I couldn't walk and, and go and she broke her foot for the second time in the same basically area of Jones Fracture and so they put her on a scooter and it was about the time that I was doing much better and uh, so our roles reversed and that's okay because I really love to cook I've been cooking all my life it's not it's not something I just started I don't know if it's the cooking or the experimenting like this morning, like, oh, let's see if this works. And I think that's part of it. Say, hey, what can I do this? Oh yeah, they're done. Let me get to turn this off and bring these out for the big review. Or reveal, whatever. Oh man, these look pretty. camera down here so you can see this. This is no frigid air stove. Does not have a timer on it. I use the timer on the micro. And well as you can see these beautiful babies, they are ready. They're crispy on top. Crunchy. Let me break them apart here and see what they're like. Man, well I can tell you one thing they're like they're like hot, 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 hot. it open here to see what it looks like in the center. Alright, it's a knife it's gonna be. Thought I could grab a fork, but no go. And there she goes, tooling off on her scooter with their morning coffee. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. All right, let's see here. I was afraid these wouldn't hold together. They would be a little crumbly, but yeah. Man. Man, they're great. So, so I guess y'all want me to put a little butter on these and try one for you. Well, whether you do or don't, I'm going to because I just think this is the deal. I'm going to put some right here and close that clam back up there. Let it set for a minute. Oh, I've got my boats because I hate washing dishes. and. These little boats have been a savior for me and her and as you for meals like this. All right. I forgot to look on the bottom. Oh yeah, the bottom is great. I mean, you can see that? Nice and crispy. Perfect, perfect. Just like I thought it's gonna be. Man, it's a winner. All right. Get this pushed around so I don't lean up against it and burn the heck out of my arm. You can always tell bakers on their arms and forearms they'll have burn marks. All right, there's my biscuit. We're gonna go in for the taste test of the first, just the biscuit by itself. And I made a cake a couple of days ago 
and I put raspberry filling on top of it. And so I've got part of, I use Smucker's Red Raspberry Seedless. And I, I used that uh, to put on my cake and this is what was left out of, that I did my cake from. I've got another jar in there that I'm actually gonna make some uh, a barbecue raspberry, uh, smoked barbecue raspberry uh, barbecue sauce. So let's go for the bite and see what happens. All right, as you can see, I'm gonna taste these little honeys. So far, so good. It's hot, but oh my goodness, wonderful, just wonderful. It's crispy on the bottom, it's tender in the center, it's not breaking apart, it's holding together. Mm. Get a little piece of this for my protector, buddy. Here, big man. Big man. Well, he must have been there with his mommy. So, anyway, let me try this with some red raspberry. Damn. That's actually good enough to just eat by itself. See, but there's my red raspberry on it. Old dude's gonna get a taste of that. And... Mm. <laughs> Man. Mm. You found a way to shut me up, feed me a good biscuit. Man, what a deal, Lucille. Mm. Man, sorry, I gotta go in for another bite. That's some good stuff. And so easy, goodness. And my coffee's still warm. That's how long it's, it's not taking me to make these biscuits from start to finish. So easy and so good. Mm. I love the crunch on the bottom and the top. Mm. Greatness there, folks. This is, this is great stuff and so easy. Y'all please share. If you find this video informative, that the old dude's trying, give me a thumbs up, please. Just so I know you're there. Comment and say, hey, I've never cooked these, or I've never heard of these, or I have heard of this. And tell me where you're at, and what kind of biscuits do you eat, if you eat biscuits. I've got some subscribers that are not even in the United States, so I guess I can say my recipes are going worldwide. The worldwide, the old dude worldwide. Anyway. Um. Thank you for being part of the world, and thank you for being on this ride with me. You can ride shotgun at any time you want to. Just tune in, and we'll talk about what's going on and what, what my next day is. And I'm going to deliver that cake that I baked the other day. There's a separate video of me prettying up a cake. I'm going to deliver it um, Monday at high noon for the plastic surgeon that I used to work for. All right, my wife worked for, th for 30 years, so... It's his birthday, it's late by about three weeks, but we're gonna deliver that at, at high noon on, on Monday. This is Sunday morning early, and uh, y'all have a great day. day. The old dude is out of here, because the old dude's gonna eat some biscuits. See you later. Can you make great biscuits with the only two ingredients, flour, 
and buttermilk. Well, that should tell you because one of them is missing. And I've already done the taste test, and yes, and they're wonderful. You gotta love cooking with memories. My mother's old cast iron skillet. Her old spatula, it's got the red handle on it. I don't know if it was hers before, or she bought it new, or if my grandmother on one of the other side gave it to her. Anyway. Now even down to the hot pad. Yeah. Gotta love it, cooking with memories. Scrambled eggs, it's what's for breakfast. I always take them easy and slow. All right. When you're cooking scrambled eggs, cook them low. Don't beat them up because they never did anything to you. And enjoy. 